if there's an issue or area of your life that we're looking into, but there's something else that you're really intrigued to look into, feel free to redirect the conversation and to say, okay, I think I'm good there, but can we look at, you know, X, Y, Z. I'm happy okay. to shift gears at any point. And yeah, in our time that we have, you can ask as many questions as you want. Perfect. Yeah. Typically I'll start in a moment with a guided meditation to get us both present. Any questions you want to ask about this time together? I don't have any questions, nothing in particular. Sounds good. All right. As I said, I'll do short guided meditation. I'm going to close my eyes for part of it and periodically throughout our time together, a deep breath and feeling the, the light and happiness of it might be the place where you live or the city or town where you live and the landscape and the people and the structures, whatever it is about the place that you call home, acknowledging and having a moment of gratitude for how that place supports you and surrounds you. If there's things about that place that bother you, like maybe there's bad traffic or not enough good restaurants or who knows what, releasing out that frustration and tension with an exhale and also including a little intention that if if that is the case that let, let's have you have good traffic in the next week and maybe a new restaurant that you love will come to town close to where you are something like that like opening up to see oh maybe for the next little while the parts of where you live that bother you they don't even bother you because there's other really great things happening there and with your next deep inhale Picturing that all of your supporters and angels and guides and ancestors and all and everyone who believes in you and loves you and supports you, they're gathering. And this is all of them are gathering around you and offering up their love and their wisdom and their guidance and their support. I'm getting this sense of some of them are clapping like, good job, good job, you're doing a good job. And then some of them are, to me, it feels like marching, like marching in place almost, which could be like, I'm taking a little bit of like, they're showing that they're working with you on whatever it is that you're diligently marching towards. They're right there supporting you, marching towards that too. And I'm going to ask that. What is a message that they want to share with you? If there's something they want to share, what's most helpful right now for your life that they can offer of clarity, wisdom, guidance, or support? So the first thing coming through I'm getting is, and I don't always know when they're talking to me like who specifically is talking. So this is just one of your love loving supporters is saying that you have some friends of the past. You may or may not consider them friends in this moment, but they're, they're not really moving forward. The type of friends who are going to be the best people for you to be around either. They're not supportive or you may already realize like, and eh, this friendship isn't really great. Like maybe it was good two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, but you're just in different places right now. So there's this sense of it's okay to release these friends of the past and it was what it was. And you had good times if you had good times and you're moving on. And I'm getting this sense of almost like a conference room, but one of those tables that is um it's shaped like a square where people but like with the letter o where there's an opening in the middle and all around this table these are your new friends your new colleagues your new social circle of people who are similar to you in one way or another it's feeling like very much similar in aspiration or dedication to their craft or just who they're involved with and what they're involved with feels like it's a really nice match for you. And I don't know that it, it also feels like these, this whole circle around the table might not be present in your life right now, but I do feel that it's very close to happening and that it, it feels like the, you have created the opening for there to be this 
table of a whole new social circle of friends and colleagues. But it also seems like some of that is you letting go of and releasing and moving on from some friends of the past so that you have the time and energy to be with the social circle who is more of mm, your type of people. Mm, Okay. Let's see if there's anything else to say about that. Yeah. They really want to emphasize that you, for the things that you want to do for yourself and your life and this in some ways it feels like a crystal clear, like vision of what you have that you would like to do. I I don't know that all the parts of it are crystal clear, but some, maybe even just the motivation feels very clear, but you're not going to be alone in the pursuit of that. Again, to me, it feels like kind of a big table of this social circle of eight to 12 people who are are your people that you feel like really encourage you and support you and inspire you and vice versa. Okay, two, I'm going to pause for a second. Two things. One, there's a question about, I don't know if you have a boyfriend or not, but they're asking me to speak about either a boyfriend or a partner. And then how does all this thing with the friends, does that land for you at all or connect? Yes. I guess what, like one of my best friends and I, like, we never argue, but we got into an argument about like, they're old friends of ours in our old circle. And I'm still, I, I mean, I feel like, um, like I'm still friends with them, but I have very clear boundaries and I have very Mm. clear, like limited time for them. Um, but my, my friend who I'm close with is like, you need to just cut them out, like period. Mm. And I, I don't know. I just think that's very, that's a very stark reaction. Mm. She's the kind of person who can cut them out. But I, I'm like, I probably talked to these people. It's just two people quarterly, if that. And so yeah. the level of energy and investment that I have in those friendships, it isn't draining to me. Okay. Like I think in the past it used to be. And so it just kind of makes me giggle because my, my good friend was like, no, you need to cut them out. Like they're done. And I'm like, well, I mean, they might be for you, but like, I, I feel like them, them, like I said, how much I share with them, how much time and energy I put towards even talking or spending time with them mm-hmm. is not much. So mm-hmm. I, I don't feel drained or you know, it's not like it's taking up or consuming me like it yes. used to. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so then I'm just like, I'm like, I, I don't think cutting them out is the answer, but that's what my friend was telling me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's funny. Cause I don't know that I get like that. It's a strong cutting out to me. It just seems like a turning towards it's, it's definitely changed yeah yes. like I, I've made a conscious effort to be like okay I'm just not I'm literally not going to see you mm-hmm. maybe once a year maybe yeah. twice a year. and it's not and and when I do see you I I know what to expect I'm not mm-hmm. like holding high expectations I'm just like yeah and then I end up having a great time because I I go into it knowing what's gonna happen exactly yeah. I think yeah. that's great and um, I think it's fine that way. Yeah. <laughs> my, my friends beg to differ, but. And are you doing anything that could be creating, like putting yourself in situations where you could be meeting people who feel like the new social, larger social circle that you want to be a part of? Yeah, I, I think this, and I think the year of 2022 and maybe a little bit before then was like a new circle of friends has formed and so so yeah I I've definitely like found a new circle or or like I know who I want to spend time with so I just spend mm. time with those people excellent oh, I'm just I like, love it's that. not worth my time I, I'm yes. very much like if I don't like you I'm just not gonna go and I don't really care like I <laughs> I'm just like I'd rather not go I, I don't really care if they have an opinion about it <laughs> so, yeah that's that. <laughs> I love it I love it Hmm. Do you, do you want to talk about love and romance? We don't have to, but no, you can. Okay. (laughs) I'm sure, I'm sure my spirit guides have opinions. (laughs) 
<laughs> are, are you dating anyone? Do you have a boyfriend? I'm married. Oh, you're married. Okay. Is yeah. it a newer marriage? No, we've been married. What year is it? We've been married almost seven years and we've been okay. together for like 12 years. Mm, okay. I'm just going to tune in and see why they're giving me such strong boyfriend vibes. <laughs> Maybe it's because we were talking about friends and, you know, I don't know. I'm just going to see if there's anything about that. I'm sure they're not going to be like, you need a boyfriend on the side. Like, you know, not that they would go there. <laughs> Okay. So similar to the friend thing, sometimes what I see, I don't know if it's like, I don't always know in time, is this recently past, present or near future? Right. So what I'm getting a sense of is the reason I was getting this boyfriend feeling was there, there's an invitation to perhaps some of the things that when you first met your husband that y'all did when you were all like young and fancy free and all that, if, if you had a period where that was how you were. So doing those type of things, some fun dates that really, not that there's anything wrong with how it is right now, but it just feels like a little bit of this re-energizing and that early dating stage kind of giddy feelings that people have and again not that I expect you're going to be like all of a sudden giddy about your husband every day I mean that that would be cool but so finding some activities or dates that you could do to to bring in some of that just delighted factor and where do you mind if I ask where did you meet your husband like what type of setting was it or circumstances uh, it was like at a party Oh, at okay. Mutual friend's birthday party. Do you and him go to parties together still, or not? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. I mean, we yeah, we're we both like being around people. We host a lot of parties. Yeah, we do a lot of things like that. Okay. Cool. Cool. I'm just tuning in, seeing if there's anything else. And again, as I said before, if there's anything you start thinking of that you want to look into, feel free to ask me. Yeah, I don't how do I put it I feel like I don't really know why but they're they're suggesting that could you like either increase the level or the frequency or the intensity of some of the fun things you do with your husband so like let's say it's a party could you and maybe you already do parties that are very like planned or themed or extravagant not that they have to be extravagant but it almost feels like adding just a little bit more of some level of intensity or frequency to it so that there's a book I'm trying to remember the book I think it's the art of gathering by Priya Parker she talks about throwing parties and in there there's a couple types of parties that the people throw that I thought was fun and so I don't know if you ever do themed parties but like if you two like to party that seems like that could be a fun way of increasing the frequency or the excitement level or you know like a murder mystery or some type of game party yeah no that makes sense we like theme things and we take them very seriously but I will agree I think the frequency or like you know, I, we have kids, so they kind of yes. take up life. Mm -hmm. um, so I think more fun is definitely needed. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm getting this sense too of, <laughs> excuse me, it's not frivolous, not that you were going to say that it is. But there's a part of me when they're saying this, I'm thinking, I could see that some people might be like, well, that's kind of random, like, have more fun, like that, that's the advice. But, mm -hmm. but but no, I it? think I've done like other things. And <laughs> after I got married, like my numerology changed when I changed my name and I like lost all my fun. <laughs> so oh. I was like, so like I lost all my fun numbers when I changed my name. And so I think I, that's, a, I've gotten that a lot, like that feedback of like, remember when you used to be fun, like either <laughs> literally speaking from my husband or like spiritually speaking from like how 
you know, that shift and, you know, the change you know, maybe it is adulthood and like just parenthood and all of that, but no, that makes sense. Oh, good. I love it. And so two other things I want to ask are, is it possible that any of the fun stuff could ever be like a side business or a career path or it's like then you're being paid to have fun and be fun or is your life because I also get like doctor vibes from you or something I don't know if it's scholarship Uh, how do I put it well I'm a mental health therapist oh okay yeah so I do mental health therapy and I do hypnotherapy and then I I do dream interpretation so I do like spiritual side of things but I also you know mental health is obviously medical and likes the western yes. side but I'm open to incorporating other things like I share my office with a Reiki provider so you know I'm definitely open to both sides of, mm-hmm. of healing yeah mm, I love that and have you have you thought about getting a doctorate in one of your interest areas or is that no. not oh, God, okay. no I'm done with school okay <laughs> It's more just the continuing education part and like focusing on what, like at this point, it's, you know, like what specific type of like mental illness that Mm -hmm. I I want to really focus on. A lot of my, I I do a lot of trauma work. So that's really all my Mm -hmm. continuing education goes towards um, is just furthering more trauma work. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And that also, I guess, makes sense why fun is so needed because it's, I highly respect what you're doing. And it feels like there's also a lot of like gravitas intensity to that work. And that, yeah. well, like generational healing. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yes. This is totally random. And if you don't like it at all, like I said, feel free to reject it. But, when you finish with a patient, do you ever feel like you could do a little 10 minute thing at the end of a session when they're ready to go on their way and be like, party, party for you because you graduated, like we did so much and bring out the little horns that you blow. And I mean, I know this is totally ridiculous, but I also feel like that level of like fun celebration Again, I'm maybe saying something that's way too playful, but I just want to invite, is there a way, like, I know play therapy is a thing, although I don't know that people right. do that with trauma, but is there oh, a yeah, way, definitely yeah, oh, okay, is there a way that as you are in the completion stages of working with someone that some of that ending can almost feel a little bit fun I don't know. Anyway, it, it's just the, I'm planting a seed and you can see what your mind, where your mind goes with this, where if it goes, goes anywhere. Yes. Yeah. No, and um, cool. yeah. And here's another thing I want to, ex- I'm so excited to tell you about the newly released Talk to the Trees written by myself. Talk to the Trees is a short book about literally talking to them, metaphorically talking to them. What do trees know about love, family, and connection, and dealing with hardships of life. You can buy it at the places linked below. Check it out. Share it with a friend. Buy it for a friend and spread the word. Explore. Is it possible? Oh yeah, now I'm getting all the tinglies. That any of the letters that you put after your name that are with your certifications and expertise could bring back in some of your fun numbers like L- I don't know what it is because maybe states are different. Licensed professional counselor and all of those little letters. They're not little. I just don't know what they are. But have you done your numerology with those letters in the mix to see? No, I haven't. Uh -uh. Okay. Explore that. See if any of them bring the fun back in. Because, oh yeah, I'm just getting this sense of like, what if you didn't lose the fun, but it was more like when somebody moves and there's so many boxes and you unpack the boxes of what you need right away, 
but over time you didn't get to like three boxes. And then like five years later, you're like, well, that's my box of board games. And that's my box of coloring books or whatever. And again, this is a metaphor. And then to me, it feels like, what if your fun isn't lost? It's just like in the mix of everything else, the like responsible things you needed as you moved into this stage got unpacked first, but there's still that box of fun waiting. And maybe when you do your numerology with your name, with all your initials of qualifications, you'll see that the fun is still there. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and since we're on job, I was, I wanted to know like if money and income that's like been my focus for the past mm. two years mm -hmm. um, started my own private practice like right when the pandemic started in the beginning mm. of 2020 mm -hmm. and so every year my goal has been like essentially just doubling my income because like it's just my own practice and I don't work very much mm -hmm. so so I have like a plan because I'm very left brain so I have like a spreadsheet <laughs> Yes. <laughs> like my savings and like where I want it to be and paying off debt and where I want that to be. And so like at the end of this year, I'm where I want to be. So like, I'm, that was my first of a five-year plan. So now I'm like going into my second year. So now I'm just like, okay, is my job going to sustain the income that I have? So then it can build on the financial goals that I have because, because my, I mean, since my income is very like session and client driven, it, it can fluctuate depending on the right. season yes. or my caseload and then just the few hours that I work a week. So, so that was a big, like going into my new year, what I'm focusing on. Yes. Yes. And let me look into that. We have a few more minutes, so I'll see what I can see. We had so much tech stuff at the beginning and I don't have a call right away. So I, I have time to extend for a few minutes. Uh, er, although I should check. Do you have anything right after we're done? Uh, I'm good right now. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Hmm. Well, first off, even as you talk about achieving your first year goals, I I feel like this just whole body joy and happiness and being proud. And I'm not saying this for me. I'm saying that, I mean, I am, but, but it's from you of like, wow, that, you know, doing this in the midst of a pandemic and all that you've done, this is amazing. And, and so I, I need to take a moment to acknowledge what you've done for yourself and that it feels like at a very deep soul level, you're very happy with this. You're very joyful of what you've done. And, and this, this awesomeness of how well your left brain has served you, how well you've served your clients. One thing I want to mention for you, which you probably already see things like this, but my sense of when I look at the, the market, people's, um, perspectives about therapy and the trends to me it just feels like a continuous uprising trend of more and more people seeing the value of therapy seeing the value of addressing their trauma wanting to have those gains for themselves wanting to have that better life and so it's it's wonder it's tracking the the industry the field in itself is tracking in a really positive great money making direction my immediate intuitions for you about your next year forward are, are two things. One, whatever for you feels like the fun you bringing those elements. And even if you in your mind want to have either like outfit or a hat or a necklace where you're like, this is my alter ego, ego, I'm Jamie with your old last name. And today I'm going into my office to like add some J Jamie former me pizzazz or feeling or how would she organize this space? So, or maybe it's not even just that. Maybe it's like, would she color code the spreadsheets a certain way? And 
and, and looking at things with like fresh eyes of how can I add 10% more fun and pleasure to this whole experience of what I'm creating because I love the left brain. And I feel like if you bring in just a little bit, oh my God, and now I'm getting silly or they're not necessarily silly, but maybe it's like Friday's cake day and <laughs> you meet with your clients, you go pick up cupcakes and have cupcakes with your family every Friday. Like it could be something super simple, but that just kind of anchors the joy in what you're doing. Because as you, it, it's a little bit, like I said before, as you continue to go forward, there's a part of you that could very easily just be, like I said, the person who unpacks and you only take out the pots and pans you need and the things that you need for like daily life survival, good, good life, but your heart and your happiness level needs to be fully in there too. And so that's one of the things. The other thing that I'm sensing is, well, and before I move to the other thing, you also bringing in some of that fun and joy and a little bit of that pizzazz, however it looks for you. I feel like the clients who are working with you are going to get a little bit of that by osmosis too. And so it's going to make them want to refer you. It's going to make them want to come back. And, and then I also get a sense of, can you, I, I don't know how big of a place you live in, but is it possible that you could go do a few events where you're talking to a community about this is what ancestral trauma looks like, or this is how it can impact people kind of like info sessions to yeah. community groups who might not be aware of it. I, I'm a little bit picturing probably like maybe 40s, but maybe like 50s and up. So a little bit of an older generation who maybe they don't have a stigma about counseling, but in the past, there might have been a little bit of one. But if you could go in and teach them and and like, I, I feel like a 30 minute info session at, I don't know where, a library or a community center or a rec center or or even very specific groups that, you know, Maybe it's like groups who either have like cultural things in common or language in common or whatever, giving them, I feel like it's twofold. One, you're doing this educational piece, which I feel like is really key because th they're people who I feel like they're not learning it from social media. They're not learning it from the news and they're not already tapped in. But if you shared it with them, it would give them an entry point and it would also feel safe for them to think, well, I don't know if I'd go to any counselor, but I'd go to Jamie because she seems nice. And I'm, I saw her present the thing and that sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And I did, I made a couple, there's a nonprofit that is starting here in town and they're doing like virtual trainings for nationwide mm. folks. So I made one about like the generational trauma of Asian Americans. And then yes. I did one that was just talking about trauma informed care for transracial adoptees. Oh, so, that's great. I mean, I, I hope I can keep making trainings for them because yes. that's geared towards like any healthcare professional so they can, you know, provide CEUs and it's yes. nationwide. And yes. it's specific, they wanted, you know, people of color to be the trainers for yes. other cultures who probably don't know much about them. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And I'm so glad you brought this up because well, one, I didn't want to be like the white <laughs> woman who's like, do you want to go talk to Asian American? You know, know. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I didn't want to do that. But since oh, you brought okay. it up, I was getting that yeah, feeling too in so many ways. Like, like I said, culturally, I feel like maybe it's not easily accessible of like, this is an option, but yeah. also as you well know, all of the nuances of like dual cultural navigating that, not arguing with your parents about which traditions you take on and which you don't and all the, right. some of that's a burden. And, and I mean, a burden in that people don't know what to do with it. And yeah, they talk to their friends, but 
are their friends qualified to help them with this? Right. And, and yeah. so I really find, I, I feel like that's such a great thing. And I also love, I don't know if you're doing any podcasting or guesting, but I feel like that would be really helpful. Yeah. Also, that's a friend of mine. We're in a podcast together. Okay. Yeah. And I would love to see you as a podcast. There's a woman I know. I'm going to ask her. I know she's Asian American and I, I don't remember all the themes she does for her podcast, but I want to mm-hmm. ask her about it and, and see, cause I think you being a guest on other podcasts and I'm even thinking this one TikToker I was looking at recently, he was just talking about these things, which I a little bit know from reading books but I don't have any friends who have this experience, but I'm sure you do of like being the, what did he call it? Like the role model, typical, like this is how you're supposed to be a good Asian child in America type thing. I I think there's a better phrase than what I'm saying. And he was just talking about how like heavy that, just, just the challenges of that. And I think, people knowing that they could go to you and even if it's not big t trauma having somebody who can help them work with that sounds like such a wonderful healing thing yeah yeah and yeah Yeah. my podcast with my friend it's like we are both clinical social workers and therapists but we do like a therapeutic happy hour so we're like we're friends and we're willing to ramble because we're having happy hour, but we also will talk clinical Mm -hmm. and and make it relevant to everyone. Cause in the end, like the topics affect everyone. They just might not know it. So so that's our way of like getting people interested in like a a very laid back way to talk about clinical topics rather Mm -hmm. than it be a very dry, like okay, so let's talk about trauma, Mm -hmm. (laughs) emotions, you know? Yes. Yes. Oh, I love that. And see, that's fun. Clinical happy hour. That's definitely fun. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I I'm so excited and I feel like you're going to help so many people. I know you already do, but it feels like it's going to keep on growing. And I love how yeah. you're helping people. And in addition to that one person I'm thinking of, I just feel like the rest of the day, I'm going to kind of be opening my eyes to be like, where else are there maybe connections I could make for you that would feel like nice people to have you on their podcast or on their live yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I know mm-hmm. that's kind of been on my radar to be on more podcasts, just me individually, rather than the one that I'm on. Mm-hmm. Cause it's I, anymore. I think that's kind of how you spread more information and introduce yes. yourself to others. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I love it. And can people across the country work from you or does it depend on what state they're in? So it kind of depends. See, this is the tricky part It's technically counseling. is just in the state in which I'm at, which is Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I can do hypnosis from anywhere. So if people oh, nice. want to do like more hypnosis, more dreams mm. kind of coaching, then I can do mm-hmm. that anywhere. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And one last thing, which maybe you already have, but on your website, if there's something that people could, well, either a thing that makes them want to sign up. Do you have a website with a sign up or no? Okay. Uh, well, like I have a website. Yeah. Not necessarily okay. a, like, I mean, they sign up as in some of them, they can like virtually make appointments or like, mm-hmm. you know, just do it on their own. Mm. They okay. Do that. Or they so I'm going to, I'm going to propose a thing and again, see if it fits, see if it doesn't, if it feels fun. But <laughs> cause one thing I'm feeling is I'm in South Carolina. So it's like, I couldn't hire you as my counselor, but what if you had a little workbook I could buy? that's that helps me or or an email list where you have like this is your boundaries tip of the week or happy hour in your inbox or something like that where all of the people from the podcasts who aren't in your state and who may not want hypnotherapy can still like be in your ecosystem and maybe buy something 
you know, like a $15 workbook or whatever you want to charge. Maybe it's less, maybe it's more. And, or if you, let's say you periodically do a workshop that is like in your expertise that people could sign up for, then yeah. you have my email and everybody else who heard you on the podcast. So, and, and so th- this might be a, like, think of how you want to do it or what you think you might want to offer to people that could make them. And who knows, like if you're going with the ancestral and and generational stuff, maybe it's about that. Maybe it's a little like workbook about exploring that on your own, but not in a way that goes so deep that, you know, people are going to get in a bad space doing the workbook, but just some like self-awareness. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So that, that might be nice. Cause I also find with it's a nice way of using the time that you have so that the people who find you aren't just like well she's not in my state and I can't work with her so I'm going to fall off the radar you know like it Mm -hmm. it's a way of making that interview have a little bit more of a lasting impact and keeping people in your circle who you know again like you make a workbook you could sell it to 50 people, but you only had to make it one time type of thing and have a few podcast interviews. So I like that for you as well for like work-life balance and time and energy input output. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, in a moment, I got to let you go because we're running short on time, but can you share for the, the viewers? I almost said the readers, <laughs> the people who will be reading your newsletter one day <laughs> and doing your workbooks, share for the viewers what you think. Uh, are there any benefits that you got out of this or was it effective in helping you in your life in any way? Yeah, I would together? say what's always helpful is it's like getting clarity or just reassurance that what I am thinking is like, I mean, you don't know me and like, we've never spoken. And so it's, it's nice when someone is, is reassuring me with the thoughts that are already going on in my head. Um, Cause I think I can get really internal and like second guess that internal voice. So because you're someone else, you can say, Oh, well, it sounds like, you know, you can incorporate this into like your relationship or your career. And so it, that's kind of a nice push to keep going. So it's more just reassuring that, you know, I need to keep doing certain things or maybe implementing and like adding in more fun or incorporating that. Cause it's not like I haven't heard it before, but it's definitely helpful to hear it. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And just get, like I said, just that repetitive and that reassurance of, okay, this is, this is good. Like this is going to keep working out. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. I'm so glad that was good. Yeah. And and I want to honor too, because it's like, even from the very beginning, I saw some of your spirit guides are like celebrating, having fun and others are like marching, marching, marching. So I feel like you're, you're working with this nice balance of the logic, the work, the like spreadsheets, and then the, the fun, the, the hypnosis, the, the, who knows, you know, the happy hour. So I, I think that's a really nice mix for you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and like I said, it's just kind of helpful to incorporate that, you know, like bring it back home. And because I think I can get definitely harder at home. Like I, I turn into the parent role. So it's nice to be reminded. I can still switch it on and off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's so true. I like that. That's really good. If you want to work together again, I'd be delighted to. Wonderful. I am a psychic who helps people in business who understands business. And what I can tell you is if there are five things or six things that you're considering doing in your business and you wish you knew which ones not to do, together we can tune in and eradicate three to five of those. So you only have one or two things to focus on imagine the massive amount of time and energy and wondering this could save you if you could just commit to the thing because you know 
that this is what's totally aligned with you and your business right now and this time, that moves you forward. That gives you so much action to pour into your business. Now, there's a playlist. You can look at other sessions that clients have had, and you'll notice time and time again, they get one to two to three specific areas that are green lights for them to work on in their business. Things that they can really focus on that are definitely going to help them. Occasionally, they also get the clarity on, don't do these other things. It's not going to work for you. It's not in your best interest right now. How beautiful is it in this time and world of so many choices, so many options to already have it narrowed down to these are things to focus on. These are things that are not going to work for you. And to have that extra of confidence, that stamp of approval saying, this also feels internally aligned. So not only are you thinking it, but this is what I'm reading from your energy field, from spirit, from the infinite field of possibilities that is maximally, maximally aligned for your potential. That's what makes life and business so much fun. So I am really looking forward to our first session together. May it be the first of many. Go ahead. There's the booking link below. See you soon.